saying to the church. It's time to lift the minds and rise higher. You can't just be here, it's gotta be doing something. The word. It's time to lift the minds and rise higher. Oh, oh, yeah. oh, 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 Kingdom Talk, let's talk about it. It's Thursday and we are back and uh, it's a beautiful day in the neighborhood. So uh, won't you be my neighbor tonight on the Kingdom Talk live broadcast and I am your host Augustus Washington Jr. And uh, so you already know what I need you to do. Get on the phone, call a neighbor, tell a friend. Kingdom Talk is on and uh, we are live in the studio on tonight. Blessed of the Lord and highly favored. Uh, Pray that you've had an awesome day on today. And pray that your evening will continue to go as well as your day. Now, by happen chance, if you've had a rough day or a bad day or just uh, a somewhat of you are in your feelings kind of day, uh, then definitely tune in and preferably something will be said to uh, lighten your load and to bless you and to help you on your way uh, to a blessed evening on tonight. But listen again, get on the phone, call a neighbor, tell a friend. Kingdom Talk is on the live broadcast. It's uh, March the 24th, uh, 2016. So if you're listening to this uh, any other time, it is a rebroadcast or they are playing it from uh, the archives of Kingdom Talk. And uh, we pray that you are still blessed by it. All right. Now, if you're listening to it and it's Friday, March the 25th, then you are listening to the rebroadcast on that Friday at 2 uh, PM. So uh, again, uh, we uh, appreciate you for tuning in tonight. I am your host, Augustus Washington Jr., and uh, we are just blessed and highly favored uh, to be back for this opportunity to share with you. We uh, have a lot of different things going on here lately. Uh, so we we were not here live last week, but we are here tonight, and we're blessed. And so, uh, listen, if you know someone outside of the listening. Uh, area of 99.9 FM by all means send them to the world wide web and uh, that's cwchrist.com cwchrist.com and when they get to the home page they'll see a red tab to the right of the home page and it says listen live and uh, you can listen live along with us on your smartphone your iPad uh, uh, any kind of internet connection you have us desktop laptop you name it uh, you can get us all right and uh, for those of you that like to put a visual with your commentary, uh, stay on that same page and stroll right down to the center uh, of that um, homepage and you'll see a stream, a Ustream video coming out of the studio of WCC 99.9 in New Ellington, South Carolina. All right, so do that for us. We appreciate you and love you a bunch for it already in advance. And remember, 30 minutes past the hour, of 7 p.m. We're going to open up the phone lines, have some dialogue with you, our listening audience. Got a couple of things I'm going to throw out at you uh, tonight and um, preferably a few things that we'll get into uh, as it relates to uh, some things from the scripture. All of it will be some things that will tie in with scripture, but nevertheless, uh, there's just a couple of things I'm going to uh, uh, kind of give you something to, to ponder on and to mull over just a little bit. Uh, grateful to have minister washington with us again on tonight um no wonder it is the first of spring um <laughs> but uh minister washington good to have you again with us tonight how are you i'm doing well thank you wonderful wonderful uh would like to greet the listening audience and uh when you're done uh how about open up with prayer for us and uh, we'll we'll go into some particulars God bless you. Excited to be here tonight so that we can delve into the Word of God uh, for the people of God. Uh, so at this time, let us go into prayer. Our Father, we thank you for your goodness and for your kindness. We thank you for your tender mercy. We pray your bountiful blessings upon this broadcast. And we pray, God, that you would 
divinely direct those to this broadcast that are in need of what will be said here on tonight. We pray, God, that no harm would be done to your word, but only edification, exaltation, and comfort. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. All right. Well, again, you're inside the live broadcast of Kingdom Talk. Again, I'm your host, Augustus Washington, Jr. And uh, we're just grateful to be uh, in the studio on tonight uh, live with you. And um, again, it is March the 24th, uh, 2016. Uh, Everybody, I'm sure, is getting ready for Resurrection Sunday and uh, what some call Good Friday on tomorrow. Uh, various uh, things that are going on tomorrow. As a matter of fact, uh, for those of you that can meet me over in Augusta, over at the King's Church, um, uh, Pastor Daniel Latimer uh, will be over with them along with uh, some more great uh, preachers, pontificators of the gospel. And uh, at 7 p.m., I forget the, uh, most people know what the King's Church is, but I'll, uh, I'll put a fly out later on. Over behind uh, Regency Mall. Where the Regency Mall area. Yeah, the old Regency Mall. Right, right. So um, so we're looking forward to that. And again, uh, if you can, come out and be with us on tomorrow. Uh, again, over at the King's Church in Augusta, Georgia. And uh, when you get there, uh, shake my hand, speak to me. Let me know you heard it on broadcast or you saw it on facebook or something just come and uh just want to speak to you love on your minute and um uh give you a great big god bless you all right well there's a lot of things that's going on um in our social order uh, uh now with the election with uh, uh every just everything that's happening um i, I want to uh, it was something that you 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 were you were asking uh, t- uh, touched on, but I want to get back into something real quick as, and we can we can delve into that possibly um, uh, before we uh, exit the broadcast tonight. Um, we've been dealing with uh, the engrafted word, and um, I want to just revisit it for a moment uh, because. I believe that there are a great deal of things that um, that that we experience uh, uh, in our lives and that we're experiencing now. Um, but just even with um, the election and some of the some of the um, controversial things that are going on, some of the controversial things that are happening as it relates to the election, as it relates to <clears throat> excuse me, Donald Trump. Uh, Hillary Clinton, uh, all of those dynamics. Um, uh, what do you What do you think about the election just as a whole? Um, not, you know, just from your vantage point. Um, what 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 do you think about it? Not Not that you necessarily you know, keeping up with that much, but just uh, from your vantage point. What What do you see when it comes to uh, the election. Well, well you kind of took the words out of my mouth. I haven't really kept up with it. I've uh, watched a uh, very little of it, and mm-hmm. um, I am not particularly a fan of uh, either candidate. Um, I think that whatever happens will be happening because it must happen in order for the end to come, whatever that outcome is. Amen. And, and, and you said something just a moment ago uh, that you were not particularly uh, interested in either one of the candidates for presidency, um, and that includes any of them that have been. I, I have this question uh, for you and for our, our Kingdom Talk listeners. What, what do we do or what should we do uh, as believers, if all we have to choose from is a Hillary Clinton or a Donald Trump, and I'm not I'm not telling anybody who to vote for, uh, we I, we don't do that. But what should we do as it relates to uh, what we have to choose from, just as believers? In your humble opinion, that is. Well, we 
we pray and ask God to help us to make an, an informed decision. Um, and that decision may be not to even participate. Okay. Uh, some people say choose the lesser of two evils. Well, how do you choose, you know, the lesser of evil? And I'm not calling them evil. I'm, I'm just using that as an analogy. Right. Um, so in, in my particular case, it would be if I did not feel the uh, ultimate yes from God for either candidate, I would um, refrain. I would. Okay. Or, or go independent because um, sometimes they have it set up where you can, well, it's always you can vote independent, but you know what I mean? They have it set up so uh, you don't have to necessarily pick one of those or whatever. But I, I brought that, I just brought that up because I'm, I'm just everything surrounding that uh, especially the time that it's it's happening, it's it's just very very interesting to me, and uh, it's something that I don't know that 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 we as the people of God look to uh, as a sign. Uh, some things that are on the horizon, uh, things that are about to um, to 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 change, etc. And there are a lot of uh, prophetic words there are a lot of theories that are out concerning the election and so forth and so on um however i will say this that i believe uh just from the things that um i've i've been given or in sense in my spirit and things that god have, have shown me and given me uh, i believe that uh, donald trump is is really a distraction um for an ultimate goal a distraction and and the lord spoke to the, uh, through one of the prophets that came to us and said that really the church now really need to pray um uh, really need to to pray uh because um if um the church did not pray and hillary clinton became president that she would be the last sitting president mm. um and again um I'm not just echoing that because he said it, but just uh, some things that 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 is that the Lord has shared and so forth and so on. Yes, I, I certainly believe that the stage is being set for uh, the Antichrist. Absolutely, and things will have to deteriorate and get to a point worldwide, globally, mm -hmm. uh, in order for a new world order to be established and everybody to be under one government absolutely so it's certainly not far-fetched uh but again and I, and I do believe we need to pray honestly i do but i also believe that um everything that is written will be fulfilled absolutely and this is and when i and i'm glad you brought that point out because when i say pray sometimes people say pray they mean so you can actually just stop but when i say pray uh, it's it, it it is to prolong the inevitable give us some more years of tranquility if you will it's kind of like what happened with um 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 uh, jonah right when the lord told him to go to nineveh and preach and he said that he would destroy the people well that's what the lord told him to do well the people started praying right. and they got a sackcloth and ashes and 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 that time of tranquility and blessing, uh, it lasted uh, for some years. Yes. And Jonah thought that, you know, well, God, why did you tell me to tell them that? And then you didn't do it. Well, uh, it was because of, of, of their prayers, because of the turning of their heart. And this is what we're saying. Uh, what I'm saying, should I say, I want to say we, uh, that if we get to a place where uh, we, the, the church begin to pray, then we can we can prolong some time of of, of tranquility and utopia uh our blessing as it relates to uh us as the people of god because the people of god are the ones that allow certain uh, blessings to you understand uh flourish to some degree um uh, in in our world said all that to say this um where are we as it relates to the people of god and this is why we've got to see uh, what we were talking about, I think the last time we were here, you were here 
we were dealing with the engrafted word uh, from the perspective of and I want to get into that a little bit more t tonight uh, from uh, we were dealing with it from the perspective of there are things that uh, we have to do ourselves, but also the word of God has to be engrafted in. It has to be rooted and in, implanted in to, so it becomes one with us. And what we're not seeing is the true church church manifested uh, in this hour. And I was ministering in um, uh, Manning, South Carolina, uh, I think what last week. Mm -hmm. um, and one of the things what the, the Lord uh, told me to ask uh, to minister was, Adam, where are you? Yes. Uh, asking the church, where are you? And this is where I believe that we are. We're in a very pivotal moment mm -hmm. where we've got to get back to the fundamentals of the word of God and really begin to see the things of God function uh, in our lives. And one of the ways that we do that, we've got to get back to telling people there's things that, that we have to turn away and lay aside and allow ourselves to uh, see the actual um, uh, work, uh, the word of God do work uh, really in our lives. And we don't see much of that right now. And also understanding that if, if we want to see a great move of God, there has to be a great prayer, a much great prayer that proceeds that move every uh, yes. dynamite uh, move that we have seen in the church, followed by miracle signs and wonders. Uh, has been preceded by much prayer. Yes. People that were very dedicated to uh, wanting the presence of God mm -hmm. in their lives and wanting to see um, God move in the land and in the country. I mean, they were really radical. And, and, and when I say radical, I don't mean weird or strange. They were very aggressive. Let me use that term. Right about seeking uh, God's face and getting into his presence, really understanding that we should be seeing more than what we are seeing and longing for it more than anything else. And when and, and those type of people come along every so often. Yes. Um, you don't find them every day. But when, when, when they come on the scene, um, great things happen. I Absolutely. mean, wonderful exciting moves of God come along things that are undeniable yes uh, you can't uh, a magician couldn't pull it off the devil couldn't yes. himself wouldn't pull it off Absolutely. <laughs> uh, and you have to attribute it to God and his doing and you know one of the things too, minister Washington is that we're getting ready to move in a place in a time in an hour where you won't have to make things up as it relates to what God is doing. Right. You will know it. Yes. That we're going to move into those times and those hours. Uh, but as you said, we, we as the people of God, as leaders uh, in uh, God's uh, church uh, and, and lay persons, uh, we have to get back again to fundamentals. And I believe that starts with uh, communication or prayer, dialogue mm -hmm. with God. Yes. Or communing with God. Um, and, and those are the things that we really earnestly got to get back to. We were on the way over. And you made mention of uh, being busy. Uh, and I, I mentioned that actually in Bible study uh, on last night. About it is a trick of the enemy that he has. He's got us so busy that we are doing uh, the work of God without the God of the work mm. and we're doing things. We're doing churchy things. We're doing godly things, but God is not even in those things. And I know some people may be saying, well, how can I do the things of God without having God? Because we, we know what scripture says. We know what, we know things that we want to do and we, we can, we can set things up to instruct structurally, uh, to look like, uh, the the system of god but doesn't mean that god is in those things necessarily right and so uh out my heart is uh to really get and i know i'm so probably sound redundant but to get back to again just the fundamentals because we're trying in my humble opinion we see more uh, uh, uh in christendom trying to make things happen 
rather than allowing God to let things happen or right. or uh, showing us uh, how to uh, bring um, uh, certain things about to bring certain uh, manifestations of his power uh, into the sanctuary. And again, uh, when he shows up, we don't have to pretend. We don't have to try to make it happen or anything of the kind. And it, to me, it gets back to um, the Bible. I want you to go to Hebrews chapter 10. Hebrews chapter 10. And um, I want to go to uh, verse I believe it's in the latter verses. Um, I just read it um, where it talks about um, if we willfully sin. I think 26 or so. That's it. Or if we. W- Was if that 26? It is. Okay, go back up to 20, uh, 24, 23 or 24. Let us hold fast the profession of our hope without wavering, for he is faithful that promise. And let us consider one another to provoke unto love and to good works, not forsaking the assembling of ourselves together as the manner of some is, but exhorting one another and so much the more as ye see the day approaching. For if ye, if we sin willfully after that we have received the knowledge of the truth, there remaineth no more sacrifice for sins, but a certain fearful looking for that's, of judgment. That's good. The the scripture says that God is faithful that promise. He's faithful that promise. He has promised us uh, a great deal of things. Particularly, I want to go to, you don't have to turn there, but those of you that are uh, listening and following along with, with your Bible, uh, you can turn it and mark it or write these scriptures down and, and, and read them in your own devotional time. But Mark uh, 16, 17, and 18, it says, And these signs shall follow them that believe. These signs shall follow them that believe. So Hebrews 10, uh, uh, 23 on to 26 is dealing with the believer. And he's saying that we should hold fast to the profession or that profession and confession are the same. They're interchangeable. Hold fast to the profession of our faith um, uh, because God is faithful that promised. He's promised us some things. Now, in Mark 16, 17, 17 and 18, it says, And these signs shall follow them that believe in my name. They shall cast out devils. They shall speak with new tongues. Yes. They shall take up serpents or drink any deadly thing. Nothing shall by any means harm them. They shall lay hands on the sick, and they shall recover. And we we, we talk about these things, yet we don't see them uh, um, consistently enough in my in my uh, opinion, we don't see them consistently enough uh, just in, in, in Christendom as a whole, uh, especially in the states. It's more so over, over in third world countries. Uh, but here's the, here's the thing that I believe it's some of the problem anyway. We've gotten away from dealing with the fact that there are things that we have to lay aside. Yes. The scripture says, lay aside every weight and sin. Yes. There are just simply some things we have to do and we have to be aggressive in doing it. Um, you know, it's, it's some people it's, it's you know, we, we become so um, hold your hand kind of uh, friendly type thing that we haven't given people the power to know that they can stand on yes. the word of God and in the power of God. The, the scripture says, uh, 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 be strong in the Lord and in the power of his might. Be strong in the Lord and in the power, not ours. Then after having done all the stand, stand therefore. And so when when a person is born again and so easily or, uh, or, or, or say that they are born again and so easily just go back to the things that they were doing before, then to me, uh, we haven't given them the tools or something did not happen. Or they have not become aggressive enough with uh, Romans 12 and 2. Be not conformed to this world, but be transformed by the renewing of our mind. And I'm going to bring all of this back to where we started at the genesis of the broadcast. 
I said all that because why? If we can continue to say, um, I'm a drunkard, I'm hooked on drugs or, or, you know, all of these problems, it, I mean, just a constant in our lives and, and then say that we are still saved. Mm -hmm. That's not scripture. Yeah. The Bible says a tree is known by its fruit. Right. So if there well, is a consistency of a thing. Yes then we've got to, I mean, I can't look at an apple tree and say it's a pear tree because I want it to be a pear tree. Right. I, you know, what happens is people are offended because you you won't go along with. Right. Uh, but we cannot side with people, no matter how much we love them. And that's where people have gotten off track. They feel like, you have no love or no compassion when you clearly state what the scripture has said. Listen, if it was up to us, we would pardon a lot of things and yes. let everybody into heaven. Right. If, you know, if, if it was up to us. But we didn't write the book. Uh, your preacher on Sunday morning, he didn't write the book. Right. He's just a messenger delivering the message. He's an ambassador of heaven. He's, yes. he's telling you what's on the mind and on the heart of God. And so what's on the heart and the, the mind of God is Galatians 5. Now the works of the flesh are manifest, which are these. Adultery, fornication, uncleanness, lasciviousness, idolatry, witchcraft, hatred, variance, emulations, wrath, strife, seditions, heresies, envyings, murders, yes. drunkenness, revelings, and such like. Now listen to what the Apostle Paul said now. And he's writing as um, the Spirit of God moves him to write. Yes. So if, if, if you don't believe that the Bible was written by men of old as the Spirit moved upon them to write, then you need to leave it alone. Uh, because it is what it is, and we can't change it. But he goes on to say, um, as I have told you time in time past, that they which do such things shall not inherit the kingdom of God. Yes. You cannot inherit the kingdom of God if these uh, works of the flesh are constantly being manifested. Yes. I'm not talking about slipping up. Right. I'm talking about a constant lifestyle. And and let me just say this to uh to 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 add a side note here. What I'm not saying that uh, a believer can't have an issue. Right. You, you understand? I'm not saying that a believer can't have an issue. I'm not saying that a a believer cannot even be uh attacked or oppressed by the devil in some way. But what I'm saying is everything has to line up with scripture from the perspective line upon line precept upon precept when when if i say that i am uh, born again and i was uh, a fornicator before yes and i'm still a fornicator nothing's changed nothing's in other changed words. that there there should have been a change you understand what i mean and we've got to go what i'm saying is we've We've got to get back to the power of God where people have a real experience with God. That's it. That, that's where it is. That's that's yes. to me, that's where the problem lies. And 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 listen, I'll I'll even raise you one better. I believe that there are people out there that are truly sincere and want God. Mm -hmm. But because the power is not being demonstrated or shown or given, they don't even really know what to experience sometime if you understand if you if you understand what i mean now i believe god will get them to that place right but it's it's kind of like this when god judges america there are believers in america right but he's not necessary it's not necessarily so much i want to get the believer it's i'm getting america and if the believers hadn't been strong enough to bring the government in that that they deserve then everybody gets it. Everybody gets judged. You see what I mean? Right. And, and so that's what I'm, 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 I'm talking about right there.
Yes. Um, you know, what, you, what you're saying is correct, but something you said that really, really touched my heart, mm-hmm. and that is we've got to get back to teaching um, about the power of God because many people, I'm convinced, don't really know that there is a yoke destroying anointing. Yes, yes, and that's what we got to get back to. There really is. It really does exist. I mean, God really do have, listen, he created the universe. He created everything that's in it. Why can't he break the yoke of the devil up off of you? Especially when he said that Christ was manifested to destroy the works of the devil. That's what the, that's what the word says. He, go ahead. But most people don't have time for that. Because, see, we got to get out in two hours. Right. Or an hour and a half. Right. And if you go beyond that, see, I am convinced of this one thing, beloved uh, the Kingdom Talk listeners, is most people are so, they're more concerned about how long we've been in church rather than how long they've been in sin. Mm. And so when we get to the place where we're more concerned about how long we've been in the sanctuary versus how long we've been in the mess we've been, we've been in, then we, we can't even get to a place where we can receive from God. And I'm not, and when I say these things, it's not that all things are bad. It's not everything bad or everybody's bad. But as a whole, God is saying, I've got to get my people as a whole back to a particular place where we can be respected, where we can, the, the, the power of God is revered again. People don't, People don't revere or fear the power of God uh, at all because most of the time we're not seeing the power of God. We're seeing flesh paraded Mm -hmm. and we're seeing gifts paraded. Mm -hmm. And so what happens is we're having revival, but God is not showing up. Um, And because he says there's, there's, there's an accursed thing that's here. You understand? And, um, and we've got to, We've got to do away with those things. 33 minutes now past the hour of 7 p.m. You're inside the live broadcast of Kingdom Talk with your host, yours truly, Augustus Washington, Jr. And, of course, uh, Minister Washington is in with me tonight. Going to open up the phone lines, have some dialogue with you, our listening audience. We'll continue with our uh, dialogue here tonight. But going to open up the phone lines if you'd like to chime in uh, on the discussion on tonight. Your numbers of access are 803 803- Three three five thirty one thirty one again eight zero three 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 five thirty one thirty one. If you have a question or comment, you'd like to chime in through Facebook, by all means go to Facebook and type in Kingdom Talk. You'll see the big beautiful crown uh, along with Kingdom Talk and the call letters of this station, and um, you can uh, chime in on the page. And if you want to remain anonymous, uh, by all means go to the inbox and inboxes, and we will receive that. We're monitoring that page right now. And I want to say a great big God bless you to Bob Jones tuned in and listening. Also to Carlina Miles tuned in and listening as well as Brother Bill Turner, my brother from another mother. And also Tracy Weavers tuned in and listening. Thank you for tuning in. God bless you. Again, if you have a question or comment, just hit us up on Facebook and uh, we'll get that. Absolutely. When I think, you know, um, you were talking earlier too about being um making god ashamed and such and i was thinking today while i was at work about the term christian Mm -hmm. and that term most people don't know this was used as a term to mock absolutely uh, christ followers absolutely uh but notice when the apostles wrote they never wrote to christians absolutely they wrote to the saints that's right. To the saints of Ephesus, to to the saints, just, just wherever they were, of Colossae. Yeah. And and I said, we just, you hear people say they are Christian and use some of the worst language. Absolutely. I'm talking about foul language. Yes. And this just hit my mind because I was thinking about it. And, and it, it just came to me. Christians might cuss, but saints don't. Hmm. And you know what? Let me just attach an addendum to that as well. Is the fact that uh, I'm, I'm 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 referring now back to Romans 12 and 2. Be not conformed to this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind. 
when when a person is born again there is work that has to be done we're still growing uh so i don't want anybody that's listening to assume that we're saying that when you get born again that you're perfect um and that you know you have no flaws or anything of the kind that's 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 not the commentary that 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 i'm uh, uh, giving to you uh, tonight what i am saying is there has to be an aggressive um, um, approach and uh, there has to be uh, some sort of uh, aggressive um, um, regimen uh, spiritual regimen that we uh, 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 adapt in order to implement into the structure of our lives and cause us to be able to go forward. I want to read a scripture to you so that you won't think I'm not saved. I'm just rambling. I'll read some scripture to you bef uh, before I go too far here. But um, Romans 13 and 12 says, The night is far spent and the day is at hand. Let us therefore cast off the works of darkness and let us put on the armor of light. Yes. Let us put on the armor of light. In other words, let us get into a place where we continue to grow and continue to put on the armor of light not darkness but light right armor is protection light is illumination and it brings about glorification in the life of the believers so he's saying that's what we have to do ephesians 4 and 22 says put off concerning the former conversation of the old man conversation in in the old testament many times means um conduct of life yes so he's saying put take put off the uh, concerning the former conduct of life the old man which is corrupt according to the excuse me the uh to the deceitful lust he says put that off yes so we can't continue to say that we can continue in these things mm -hmm. and that all is well yes I, I guess the biggest thing for me is not the babe in christ but it's the, the it's the it's the one that's been in church for 10 15 20 years Yes. And a lot of times we find in those situations that the teaching has not been put in place. Right. And and that's why we need uh, radio stations and we need preachers yes. uh, on television stations that will have no problem reading Galatians 5, just as I did, and pointing out and saying, no, this is what the Word of God says. Yes. I would rather somebody tell me the truth and I heard a little bit, yet dig into it for myself to see whether or not what's said is so, mm -hmm. and get a chance, have a chance to correct it, than to continue to be stubborn and operate according to my flesh and miss the kingdom of God. And 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 now I want I want to uh, just kind of segue back into. Uh, where we began at the genesis of the broadcast because i want to bring this somewhat full circle because of this point all of this what we're talking about tonight uh is where i believe god is is taking us right i don't, I don't believe that we just i just think we need to get there i believe this is where god is taking uh, uh his people his church uh, simply because again some things that, that that he shared with me and shown me just in visions and, and so forth uh prophetically but one of the reasons why we've got to get back to the fundamentals of what we're talking about, and it's not just, uh, you know, stop doing wrong, that kind of thing, but also being able to, to walk in the power of God um, uh, as they did, you know, in Azu the, the Azusa Street Revival. That's the ultimate goal. That's the ultimate goal. Um, because of this, when we have uh, people fighting, uh, at uh, presidential uh, 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 rallies uh, such as Donald Trump and hollering Black Lives Matter and now the, the church is divided because the Caucasian believers say well all lives matter now the, the black church uh, no well black li now, we, now we're divided now we're getting into a frenzy and we're getting into all of these things if we were really just look at what's happening, right. we would understand what's going on. We'd understand that there is a racial divide that's been set up by the devil. There, there is uh, a social divide. There is an economic divide. 
there is a religion, uh, a religious divide. There's a denominational divide. And if we get caught up in the narrative that the enemy is already written out and handing out to everyone, what's going to happen is everything that he wants to happen is going to play out. Because at the end of the day, if we don't walk in the power of God, when all of the things that's been prophesied begin to happen, those that have been in the sanctuary, those that say, well, I'm why well, I am born again. Oh, I'm delivered. Well, I'm this and I'm that and this, that and the third. What's going to happen is you're going to find out whether we really are. And then if you're not, then who do you blame? Mm people that are sitting in ministries that they, they know they're wrong they know the ministry is wrong they know it's not right yet they continue to sit there but when all of the calamities and, and prophetic words that begin to happen start happening who is it then what right how do how do you have the faith now to stand how do you have the faith to stand through adversity? How do you have the faith to stand through not being able to buy food uh, or not being able to, uh, to, to, you have money, but you can't use it. See, there are many things, that, beloved, that's been prophesied and people think these things are not happening and coming to fruition, but I'm here to tell you that they're happening. Right. But, but secular media is keeping it on the down low because they do not want you to know what's going on so they don't bring about a frenzy and bring about chaos. Right. And, and I believe if God has your ear, he'll prepare you for what's about to come. He Absolutely. will tell you what, this is what you need to do so that when the plagues hit Egypt, or in our case, America, yes, we will be in Goshen. Absolutely. Absolutely. And that's what that's what we've got to have, because it's listen, it's not just about saying lay aside every weight and every sin that does so easily beset you so that you can walk around and look like, hey, look at me. I've got it all together. No, the getting it together part is so that we can expand the kingdom of God. Yes. So that we can bring forth and show forth the power of God and so that the earth can be filled with his glory that that's the purpose that's the purpose the purpose is that the glory of god will be manifest the bible says in romans 8 i believe around 19 and so he said that the creature waited for the earnest manifestation of the sons of god right. that's where we are right now the storms and the all the things that we see earth is sick with sin because of the things that we want to see happen uh and and uh you know and then we say well um, well, I'm going to vote for, um, you know, this person and, uh, be, be, but well, we need money, uh, but we got to pray. Sometimes it's not about necessarily the vote. Sometimes it's about the church being the church and praying and laying aside these things, giving, actually giving people the power to know that they have the power that God has given them to change their lives. They don't have to shack up. That shacking up is an old term that old folk use you know living with someone that is not your husband or your wife that's what shacking means living with a person <laughs> that is not your husband or your wife that's what shacking means living with a person that is not your husband or your wife or sleeping with a person that's fornication adultery that's not your your spouse or etc um th that's what that is and listen people fall we we understand people fall and we as believers should help them. Right. Because sometimes people hear you talk like that and they think that you're speaking from a self-righteous platform and you've got it all together and you're a doom and gloom preacher and you just want to throw stones at everybody. Right. So, that's not what I'm saying. People fall. People people make mistakes. We as the believer pick them up and restore such a one, but do it in the spirit of meekness. But then at the same time, give them the power from the word of God to say, listen, you have the ability not to go back to it. We have the ability to go forward. We have the ability to be able to stand. Colossians 3 and, and 5 says, mortify therefore your members which are upon the earth. Yeah. Fornication, uncleanliness, inordinate affections, evil con uh, 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 concupiscence uh, and covetousness, which is idolatry. All of those things. He says we got to put that stuff away. Right. We got to put that stuff away. You know, so it's, it's wrong. Yeah. We can't be debating whether uh, a homosexual can be a leader in the church. What? There's nothing to debate. <laughs> the Bible says that the word of God 
is the, the breathe on word or the inspired word of God is given for uh, um, uh, correction and doctrine and reproof, reproof and, rebuke. and rebuke and all of those things. Again, I go back to Mark 16, running out of time. I go back to Mark 16, 17, and these signs shall follow them that believe. Mm -hmm. Not follow the bishop, not follow the, the pastor, not follow the, <clears throat> excuse me, the apostle, <clears throat> not follow the evangelist, but follow the believer. Yes. And if we don't get to a place where we are consecrated, consecration now is like uh, a, a monster in Christendom. Yes. You, you, you start using the word consecration. You know, fast, do a shut in like from 12 to 6 in the morning or 12 to 7 in the I, I can't do that. Mm. You know, um, the Lord forbid a, a, a demon uh, manifest and you have to deal with it. Well, we don't want to stay there that long to deal with that. we ready to go. <laughs> you know, the buffet going to close it five it's because we our bellies have become our god wow and, yes. and the lord is saying we can't do that because um hebrews 10 26 says if we willfully sin that's right there remaineth no more sacrifice for sin so now if i if i willfully continue to go back into this thing it is just as as, as if jesus didn't even die for me hmm he said, there is no more sacrifice. In other words, there, there's no more covering or an atonement or removal for that sin. Right. If you keep, but the scripture says, after having come into the knowledge of truth. Mm -hmm. So we've got to give people truth. We've got to give them wisdom, uh, or should I say truth, and, and allow them to get the wisdom from the word of God so that they can uh, get in a place to see these things manifest in their life. 47 minutes now past the hour of 7 p.m. You're inside the live broadcast of Kingdom Talk. I'm your host, Augustus Washington, Jr. It's March the 24th, 2016. If you're listening to this and it's March the 25th and it's about uh, about uh, 11, 12 minutes before 3, then you're listening to the rebroadcast. But you have an opportunity right now uh, to call in March 24th, 2016 at about 748 in the evening. You can call in, chime in. Uh, on the discussion tonight, um, your numbers of access are 803-335-3131. I want to just empower and encourage some people tonight that whatever it is that you are dealing with or any stronghold that you think is on your life, uh, the word of God carries the power yes. and it possesses the power to cause you to be free and delivered and made whole. And I believe that the people of God uh, that if, you know, if it's something even greater then the people of God uh, have the power through the word of God and through Holy Spirit to cause that person to be delivered. But we have to be in a position where we want to be delivered and not just want to be delivered, but we want to give up those things that's causing us uh, to be bound. So you can't come and get deliverance and you still want to hold on to your pigs. Mm. Uh, you, you can't do that. It, it didn't work that way. You that's have right. to actually want want it and you want to you have to you have to want to give up the thing or the people or the person and or pers persons that's 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 causing you uh to to be bound uh, in those situations 803-335-3131 i want to say a great big god bless you to angela jackson also uh, annette glover as well as uh, Minister Jimmy Glover tuned in, listening. Thank you for tuning in. We appreciate your lovely life for it. We're going to continue. Yes. One of the promises from uh, the book of Psalm comes from Psalm 107, verse 20, which says, He sent his word and healed them yes. and delivered them from their destructions, or he rescued them from the pit and destruction. The word of God carries the power to accomplish what you need accomplished in your life yes the only thing you need to do is believe even as jesus said only believe yes uh, that's what he said to jarius when he received the news that his daughter was dead he said only believe only believe we only have one thing to do when we are in uh various situations um something is holding us strong something 
that we've been uh, struggling with maybe for years. And that is to understand that he sent his word and healed us and he delivered us from the pit and from destruction. We just need to hold on to that word and believe it. I am gl I'm glad you said that because I, I have a thought. Let me go to the social media again real quick. I want to say great big God bless you to Mary Mathis. Also, Sarah Benning tuned in and listening. Uh, we appreciate you for doing that. Uh, great big God bless you to you. I want to ask my Kingdom Talk listeners something uh, real quick before we have to exit out of here. we got a few minutes, but what does it mean to be delivered? Because you read a scripture where it talks about the Lord uh, delivered them from all mm -hmm. uh, of their sins. What does it mean to be delivered to you? Uh, what does it mean to be delivered? Uh, that's the question I want to uh, pose to my Kingdom Talk listeners. You can chime in on Facebook or you can uh, you can uh, chime in uh, via the phone lines. Your numbers of access are 803-335-3131. Again, 803-335-3131. What does deliverance mean to you? Um, and, and, and just in your own words, it doesn't have to be, you know, you have to go... Um, you know, have to be a biblical scholar or, or anything. Just in your own words, uh, love for you to chime in if you would. Um, what does it mean to you? I want to continue just um, in the same vein that we're in, uh, because again, the, the the things that that are upon us, um, it's a great hour for the people of God, but it's also going to be a dark hour. And I'm still telling people, save some water, um, non-perishable items, all of those various things. Start start saving those things and having some things set aside. Right. Um, because they won't tell you that there are no cargo ships moving in the Atlantic. It's it's dry, and that means that nobody's buying and ordering. Cause nothing's coming in. Um, so they won't, they won't tell you the real reasons why all of the Walmarts are closing and Kmart's are closing. They won't tell you that, but we have to be ready. Now that's not, these things are not, uh, the beginning of the tribulation. <laughs> <laughs> these are just things that, that are going to happen, um, to, to usher in certain things. Yes. I mean, we can just look at what happened in um, in Flint, Michigan. Absolutely. And and that's enough right there for us to say, okay, anything can happen. Let me be prepared. And not only that, uh, uh, but, um, but um, right there in Bath and North Augusta and yeah. Clearwater had an advisory on the water as well. Bill Turner chimed in on the question. And he says deliverance uh, means freedom, explanation points. And that is when you when you are delivered, you are free. Mm -hmm. You're free from things. Um, and I like the way he worded it because he put several explanation points behind it. In other words, you shout it. I'm free. Uh, when a person is free, I'm talking about if you've been really like bound and you're free, you, you don't, you don't, it's not like, oh, thank the Lord, I'm free. No, you scream and you're like, good yes lord i'm free you know um and you know some people are different and some people are not as dramatic or what have you but uh there is a difference um and you can tell the difference when when you are free and 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 again i believe and i know well i don't believe i know that god want his people free he want his people delivered he want us functioning in the power of the lord and and he want other people free Right. Deliverance, uh, or should I say salvation, uh, it's, it's, it's fivefold in nature uh, because it's deliverance, it's, it's uh, safety, it's preservation, it's healing, and it's soundness of mind. Now, all of these things, uh, some of these things are progressive. Some of these things are instantaneously once we are born again. Once we're born again, we're, de we're delivered from a great deal of things. Right. Um, and then sometimes we have to go through a process uh, of deliverance in a process of growing and we um, the things that we commit unto God he keeps us he preserves us uh, through all of the storms and through all of the things that we uh, have to deal with and so there are some people that are listening right now and you feel like you know 
uh, I can't, I don't know how I'm going to get through this. Sometimes, some things, some things are a demon. Some things are just, you're just lazy and you got to <laughs> be aggressive. And I don't mean that to be facetious or demeaning in any kind of way. Um, but I'm just saying as a matter of fact, because sometimes we're looking for the power of God to act uh, like a magic trick. Right. And we're looking for God to pull a rabbit out the hat when we didn't see one. Uh, but it really doesn't work like that. We have to actually take the word of God and apply it to our lives. This is what we're talking about, the engrafted word. Yes. The word that is engrafted into our lives. It, it, in other words, to be engrafted, it is to be infused and become one uh, with God. And uh, that's that's what we need to see happen in our lives. I guess we've got to get out of here now uh, in about a few minutes. But um, Minister Washington, if you'd like to um, chime in and and give. Um, um, well, I got I got to go to social media. I got some people just chiming in here being delivered. Carlina Miles said being delivered um, to me means God freed you from something that was having you bound uh, or strongholds, etc. Uh, Sarah Bennon also uh, chimed in, said deliverance to me is salvation. You have been saved from something or someone. You have been saved from um, the whole of the enemy and you have been saved from his works. Uh, so my Kingdom Talk listeners are chiming in and they have some good commentary here um, to be delivered. And so sometimes you need to be delivered from some people. Amen. There are some, let me tell you something. There are some of you that's listening to me right now. There are people in your life you already know that you need to be delivered from. Because every time they're around you or you're around them or you hear them or something comes up, uh, it, it takes you to another place and you can't gather yourself and, and you can't, you know, get to the place where you need to do what you need to do. No, you need to be delivered from them. You need to be delivered from the whole of them. You know, there are some people have a hold on folk. Yes. And, and so praise God. We, yes, we got to be delivered. Some need to be delivered from ministries. Some need to be delivered from their mother. The, all, just anything need to be delivered. We got to get out of here. Minister Washington, final words. Final word. I know we covered a lot of, of uh, ground tonight, and we were uh, hopefully didn't discourage anybody, but, but wanted to encourage you. And I want to encourage you tonight that even if uh, you are in a situation where you're wondering, I don't know if I'm really saved or not according to the Bible, uh, um, and according to some of the things that we brought out tonight, uh, know and understand that God is only a prayer away. And even if you are dealing with things that have not fallen off of your life just yet, continue to seek God. He knows your heart. Amen. And I would just, I would uh, echo those sentiments and add an addendum to the, attach an addendum to it as well and say that uh, just because you have a problem does not mean necessarily that you're not saved. That's not what we're saying. And we pray that we, as, as Minister Washington said, we didn't discourage you from that, uh, but also want to let you know that there is a time where we have to be aggressive uh, with the things of God and with the word of God and in prayer. And I believe and know that we will see because God is faithful uh, to his word um, as to what he said. And uh, so trust God and believe God and uh, and know that he is uh, one prayer way. I want to pray for you real quick and we're going to get out of here. Father, in Jesus name, we speak life over every person that's listening to this broadcast broadcast right now. We pray right now and we speak freedom in their lives, freedom in their bodies, healing to your life, healing to your mind, healing to your spirit. Everything and every person that you're tied to that you shouldn't be connected to, we call you free right now. We called you out of the bondages of sin and degradation. We call you out of the bondages of soul ties that don't need to be in your life and we speak life over you. We command you to be free, to be loosed by the power of the Holy Ghost in the name of Jesus. Listen, we love you to life. We thank God for you. Thank you for tuning in. And if the Lord tarries, we'll be back same uh, next Thursday, same time, same station. God bless you. Have an awesome night. You've been listening to Kingdom Talk. The views and opinions of this broadcast may or may not be the views and opinions of this radio station, staff, and or ownership. We thank you for listening to Kingdom Talk, and we appreciate all of your calls. 
Remember to tune in to Kingdom Talk every Thursday from 7 until 8 p.m. And remember that you are a king's kid. So always speak up, speak life, speak kingdom, kingdom talk. Until next Thursday, God bless you and good night.